So this weekend, the Ravens have a really, really tough, I mean, it's tough even the best word to use, but a tough game against the Green Bay Packers. I'm not expecting Lamar Jackson to play, and Aaron Rodgers, even though his twinkle toes ain't feeling the best right now, he's going to be a full go. Uh, so it should be the Tyler Huntley versus Aaron Rodgers show. Now, uh, something that is on our side. Tyler Huntley is undefeated against the NFC North. So we can hold our heads on that. And hopefully that streak continues. But to talk about this game that we got coming up, to, to really dive into it and really get a good background on these Green Bay Packers, why not bring on one of the best people to talk some Green Bay and some Go Pack Go? Team, keep it clean. Let's do it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team, keep it clean. We got a very, very special guest in the building from the Grassy Posse. Welcome, Tom. Appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you having me. Oh, yeah. No great. Doubt, man. First, uh, to, so we can get straight into it. How did you start doing YouTube and why? <laughs> and why? Well, <laughs> it wasn't for the money because, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I started PatCast back in 2015. And it was just a podcast. It was just audio. Uh, rocked with that for like a couple years. Um, the way that it started was because when the Packers lost in the NFC Championship game to the Seahawks, uh, mm -hmm. like that was the most crushed I've ever been after a football game. And like a couple of days later, I just made a re like a pretend reaction video because of all the things that went wrong. And I'd never really done YouTube before that. And it got like 60,000 views. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> okay, yeah. fancy over here. <laughs> so, um, you know, people were reaching out and they're like, you should do a podcast. And instead of like, you know, doing the smart thing and going to YouTube, I was like, all right, I'll just do a podcast because no one else is doing those except mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did th that for a couple of years. And then I, I just started putting like a little bit more and more on YouTube. And it turned into like a two a week thing to a little bit more often. And now since August of 2019, we're doing content at least five days a week the entire year. So mm. yeah, it's just, uh, it's blown up and it's just grinding as you are well aware. <laughs> oh yeah, it's def definitely a grind. What's been, uh, what would you say your favorite part of it is? I mean, I have to say that the community that's been built over here is not mm. like a traditional like creator, you know, viewer experience in which we do so many live streams of games. We do Q and A's like we're it's it's constant engagement. Um, so I, I think that that has been probably the best part about it. And for me, like I don't there's there's two shows that I do with other people, but the main channel, like I don't take any sponsors. It's all like fan funded. So mm. um I, I, I kind of like like that element because it's similar to the Packers. And on top of that, um, it's led to some really cool experiences. I met some really cool people. I was on Sunday Night Football twice because of this. And, you know, it, it's just it's it's crazy how much it has grown and just to see the progression. And I mean, I, I was ecstatic the first time 100 people listened to my podcast and I remember exactly what episode it was. So, mm. you know, I think it's just being able to create something and watch it grow and or to affect as many people as it does is just a really cool feeling. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Now, um, how did you become a Packers fan? <laughs> so I live in New York. Um, oh. Yeah, so uh, I'm not, you know, Wisconsin born and raised. Uh, I was born and raised in New York. And my dad is a diehard Cowboys fan, like diehard. And growing up, he tried to indoctrinate me into Cowboys fandom, <laughs> and I just wasn't having it. And... It was the year the Packers lost to the Broncos in the Super Bowl. During the regular season, they played the Cowboys. And I was in elementary school at that point. Mm -hmm. And I went into school one day, and I heard the Packers beat the Cowboys. And so I went home, and I told my dad, I said, hey, I heard the Packers beat the Cowboys. I'm a Packers fan now. And I just <laughs> stood with that for 25 years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so like my dad and i now like we've gone to the des no catch game like in lambo before like we were there Ooh, for that game that was oh, oh it was a great ride that, home. Hot. that was a great ride game um but yeah i mean it, it just is you know you, you you pick teams when you're younger and then you just stick with them and it's not always the easiest to watch packers games in new york but you know now that's that that's been my team for you know the majority of my life 
Cool, man. All right. And before we start talking about this game, where can everybody find you? Your YouTube, Twitter, all that good stuff. Hey, all that great stuff. Yeah, the handles are always uh, Tom Grassi Comedy. So you could do that because some random accountant took Tom Grassi. So that was kind of a bummer. So it, everything is uh, Tom Grassi on the uh, on the YouTubes and Tom Grassi Comedy on all the social medias. So in case you're like, hey, I want to hear more of this Muppet voice. You could you can go find that there. <laughs> All right, so we we all know Rex Ryan's, but we got to have a conversation about feet. Oh man, How? I didn't wear socks for this. I thought that, that we were showing. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay, yeah, no, that's yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't going to show my feet on here. Yeah, let's talk about toes. <laughs> so Aaron Rodgers, how, how significant is this toe injury? Do you think it has changed the way that he's played at all? How, how you feeling about? Aaron Rodgers toes. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's just say I have talked and seen more of Aaron Rodgers' feet than I ever would have thought possible, <laughs> and more than I ever wanted to. I just want to put that out there. We're not we're not shaming anybody, but you know, it's just it's a lot. And you know, it's funny because since his toe injury, the guy has been playing like a god. Like he has been playing phenomenal football, and. You know, he originally was supposed to be COVID toe, and then he had to show his toe to the entire press conference, which then spread to the world, in which it, he has a fractured toe. And, you know, during the bye week, he said it felt good, rested up, what have you. Um, this past Sunday, he said he aggravated it again, and it was kind of hurting him. But he has been very steadfast on, I will not get surgery if it requires missing time. Like, he refuses to miss any time. And I think that, honestly, it's just a matter of pain management. That's what he said on McAvee's show on Tuesday, and that's kind of what he's going with. So I'm not terribly concerned, to be completely honest, because while it is painful, I think he's just going to go in the pain management route. If he can get a minor surgery in which he can still play on Sunday, great. Um, I think it just kind of proves how important it is to maintain this number one seed, giving him another bye week to rest, as we need it for like the entire roster. But... Yeah, I'm not overly concerned because it seems that even with this injury that he's had for weeks now, he's still playing at an incredibly high level. Mm, that's a good point. And you brought up being the number one seed, uh, which the Packers are right now after uh, after the Cardinals took that loss uh, to the Rams. Do you think uh, with the remaining schedule for the Packers, that that's something that they can really hold on to? So it's it's not even a matter of the Packers because I think in order for them to win – the number one seed, they're going to have to win out. And that's not going to be the easiest thing to do. They have you guys in the Ravens, so I think it's going to be a tough game. They have the Browns on Christmas Day, which I think d depends on what Browns team shows up. Uh, but they might be well-rested since three-quarters of the team is not playing this week. Um, then they have the Vikings, who they lost to already this week. It is at Lambeau. And then they finish with the Lions. So you're playing against three potential playoff contending teams, and I think it's going to be difficult. And you know, we have the tiebreaker over the Cardinals because we beat them on Thursday night. The team I'm afraid of, honestly, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in which they have a walk in the park for <laughs> their final four games. They pay the Panthers twice in there, the Saints, and then there's another, I think it's the Jets. Like, it, it, it's, it's a walk in the park. So I'm, like, hoping that Taysom Hill can pull out some magic and, <laughs> and defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend. But I think it is possible – but I think it's going to be really difficult to win out. Um, it's possible, you know, we're playing you guys at like, it would seems it might be an opportune time if Lamar Jackson's not playing um, next week, you know, with the Browns being inconsistent, there's possibilities there. The Vikings are always going to play us tough. We, it is being played in Lambeau, but Dalvin cook. I mean, he looked real good this past week. Oh yeah. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be a challenge, but if they, if they win out, they're obviously in it. Um, but if they don't win out and they lose even a game, I, th I think it's going to be tough to potentially get that one seed. Mm. Yeah, that would be really tough. Now, something that would be even tougher and maybe even tougher is the status of uh, Devontae Adams going into next year because he's not signed after this year. Now, two things. One, do you think, because I know Aaron Rodgers has that special thing in his contract to where if he doesn't want to be back, then he could be traded, blah, blah, blah. But do you think... Devontae Adams' contract with the Packers is contingent on Aaron Rodgers remaining there? Or do you think he would stay no matter what? Or do you think he would leave no matter what? 
Um, so that's a, that's a great question. So Devontae Adams is scheduled to be a free agent after this year. He was asked that exact question this past summer during a press oh, yeah. conference. He said, like, if Aaron Rodgers stays, like, would that have an impact? And he said, absolutely not. Because okay. Devontae Adams wants one thing and one thing only. He wants to be the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Okay. He, that he flat out said that. And to be completely honest, it's well-deserved. Because mm-hmm. the contract that he's playing on now is a steal. You know, yeah. for how good this guy has been, um, it's an absolute steal. And the thing is, and this is where it gets problematic, DeAndre Hopkins is currently the number one paid wide receiver. But it's weird because it was like additional money that he was getting on an already there contract that he was getting paid from the Texans. So like his number per year is like insane. I think he's getting like $17 million a year. It's like some crazy number that he's getting. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I just don't think the Packers want to pay that. During the offseason, there was talks between Devontae Adams and the Packers, and then those seem to have frozen over. And I think it's kind of like it's a wait-and-see game. But to be completely honest with you, I don't think Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers, potentially Zadarius Smith are going to be suiting up as Green Bay Packers next year because right now we are in cap we're in, we're in a bad cap shape for, for next year. I think we're like $60 million already over the cap for next year. And that's without doing anything. So, you know, there's some restructuring that you can do, you know, maybe for Aaron Rodgers because they voided. Uh, he originally had this season and two more on his current deal, but they mm-hmm. voided that last year. So, you know, if the Packers want to hold on to Aaron Rodgers, they can next season. But I mean, considering the cap space, this is why a lot of people are calling this the last dance uh, mm. for, for this season, because it kind of is, because this is might be the last time we see a lot of these high player, you know, high quality players, you know, on the Packers. Oh, and one of those high quality players that you mentioned, and I don't believe he's been suiting up recently because he's been dealing with an injury. And that's been good old Zadarius Smith. Yes, sir. Um, us Ravens fans, we uh, we know Zadarius Smith. Very we well. love Zadarius Smith, and, and I remember so many times when and he was in his last season with the Ravens. A lot of us wanted the Ravens to resign Zadarius Smith, but did not think it was going to happen. And he knew, he knew yeah. because uh, he he balled out that year and he cashed in uh, with the Packers, and he has definitely been a baller. Um, yeah. He he showed signs of being a baller when he was with the Ravens, but with the Packers, he continued to get more of an opportunity and showed his worth. Uh, that so that will definitely be something if uh, if he's not with the Packers next season, uh, and I wonder if he would make a return. But anyway, uh, back to Devontae Adams. Yeah, the Ravens they know about Devontae Adams. We know about Devontae Adams as fans. So if the Ravens key in on Devontae Adams, if their defense tries to take him out the game as much as they can. I feel like you can only do so much, but if they try to take him out the game as much as they can, what other receivers would you expect to step up? And and what other receivers have really shown that they can get the job done this year? Yeah, I mean, and that's been like kind of the prevailing question for quite some time for Packers fans, because even in the past couple seasons when they've gone to -to back-to-back NFC Championship games, it was like, well, what about wide receiver? And a couple years ago, I put out a video saying that the Packers have a wide receiver problem and everyone was like, Oh, they just don't have enough receivers. And I said, nay, nay, that's not, that's not the problem. The ultimate problem with the Packers wide receiver core is that after this current season right now, they only have two wide receivers that are contracted to be on the roster. Two. That is rookie Amari Rogers, who we drafted this year and Randall Cobb, who's probably also going to be released because his contract is going to get crazy too. That means that Alan Lazard, Marquez Valdez, Scantling or MBS gone. Like they're all gone. Devontae Adams, that we talked about gone. So heading into this season, we're like, okay, we need guys to set, step up. And MVS last season did that in a lot of games. He also made some blunders in which like he fumbled against the Colts game. You know, he has a lot of drops like that. He's usually like the guy that people pin a lot of the drops on um, and he's gotten better. Um, however, he's dealt with injuries this season um, and the like. So he's starting to kind of like come back a little bit. He's going to be a deep threat because he's our only speedy guy that's on the team. Like he is our guy that we throw go routes to like, you know, or deep posts to he is that guy. So, mm-hmm. MVS is a difference maker um, just because he spreads the field a little bit more. A guy who had a lot of opportunities in Randall Cobb's absence was Alan Lazard last week. Alan Lazard, who has been kind of like this number two, number three, sometimes number four guy 
Um, he stepped up in a major way last week and he just kind of is a reliable guy. You know, he's not like super flashy or anything, but he'll come down with the ball. Um, but honestly, one of our best receivers is Aaron Jones. Like he is the, cause he is such a threat in the passing game and he got banged up in the second half and he's recovering from an injury. Um, but he got banged up in the, the bears game. So he didn't really play a whole lot in the second half, but that guy it is a good football player. Like he knows how to go out and catch the ball. So, you know, he can run routes, you know, he can make those tough to uh, grab catches. And I think it's kind of functioning a little bit that you see like Leonard Fournette functioning with the Buccaneers right now, because Leonard Fournette, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he's like their leading receiver in terms of like how many catches he has, like in receptions, he's either number one or like number two. So I think it's just that there are a lot of guys who um, can be problematic and they get more opportunities because you have a guy like Devontae Adams on the field. So if, to answer your question fully, I think you're looking at an Alan Lazard, Aaron Jones, and then for like those explosive plays, you're looking at MVS. Mm, okay, appreciate that. Now, um, a situation on the Packers that I'm very naive to uh, is their tight ends. Now, Ravens, early on this season, they struggled with a couple, a couple of tight ends, but Recently, they've been for actually for a while now. They've been doing a pretty good job against tight ends. Yeah. Um. But w- what is the Packers situation at tight end? Who's there, and how have they been? Yeah. So, uh, Robert Tunyon was uh, a breakout tight end who's been on the team for a bunch of years. Um. He broke out last season. He had double digit touchdowns, uh, and he was doing great in training camp this year. He was catching every single ball that was thrown to him, and you're like, oh, like he's gonna have another breakout year. Unfortunately, um, you know, he is out for the year. So he is, he's out, he sustained an injury earlier this season. So he's no longer playing. So our two top tight ends is going to be Mercedes Lewis, otherwise known as big dog who had a couple of catches uh, this past week against the bears. He is just such like a, not only just an awesome veteran presence there, but like he also is known for making a couple splash plays per game Uh, on top of that. You have Dominique Daphne, who's kind of like a lower ranked guy who you haven't really heard a lot from him. So the other guy that you may hear of is Josiah DeGuara. And he is um, a former day two draft pick, uh, rookie year last year. Use him a lot in blocking and in the run game, um, but can get out and actually catch. But I would say like for our tight ends, you know, we're kind of lacking there. You know, Jay Sternberger, who was a former third rounder, he got released uh, this season. Tunyon, as I already said, he's on IR. So tight end really hasn't been like a, a point of strength or emphasis this year. Okay. Um, but if there's a guy like to look out for, it's every now and then Mercedes Lewis, you know, might be good in like a goal line situation and or there to get like a much needed first down. Hmm. Now you talked about one of those tight ends being uh, Tunyon and he, yeah. him being out for the year. Uh, now y'all had a uh, another player go down who was thinking, oh, he might be out for the year. But then I remember seeing uh, last week, maybe the week before last, that he was designated to return so he could start practicing, that being uh, Jaya Alexander. What is the the status with him right now? Yeah, so Jaya, um, so he sustained an injury in which the options were, okay, do we get surgery and end his season right now? Or do we give the potential, because it was early on, do we give the potential that it heals on its own and then maybe he could come back and make a playoff run? So they designated him to return. So now he has three weeks to be activated, right? right? Because other than that, then they have to put him on IR for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So this is week two. So I imagine he is not going to be playing. He was in practice in a limited facility last week, but I imagine that the Packers, similar to like a Lamar Jackson, it's like, hey, don't play him like until you absolutely have to. Because they would rather, you know, lose the number one seed and then have him play for the playoffs then, you know, risk a long-term injury for him because he's a guy who's about to get paid as well. You know, right. he's about to finish mm-hmm. up his contract as well. Um, and he's just a phenomenal player and he's the best corner that we have. So uh, I, I highly doubt you're going to see Jair Alexander on the field. Um, another guy that Packers fans are looking at too is David Bakhtiari, our, our starting left tackle. Tore his ACL on New Year's Eve last year, uh, mm-hmm. has been struggling to make it back. They activate him off the PUP list. And he just hasn't been playing yet. You know, he's just trying, he got like little like microscopic surgery um, a few mm-hmm. weeks ago. And it's just a matter of like, just trying to get healthy at the right time. So like those three guys that we're talking about that were waiting to return, you know, Z, Jair, and then Bakhtiari, 
I don't think you'll see either of them on the field uh, this Sunday. And it's hopefully just prepping for, you know, a January playoff run. Mm. So with, with the Packers on defense, I, I want to ask you, what, what are some of the Packers' biggest challenges uh, that they've been having on defense? And for the Ravens to really take advantage of, uh, what would they need to do? Yeah, I think what's, what's really coming down to is limiting the big play, right? Mm. If you go and you look, oh, well, we'll talk about special teams. But uh, the defense, just focusing on the defense for right this second, um, a guy that we picked off the Cardinals practice squad, Rasul Douglas, has been absolutely phenomenal for us. Um, but he is all like he's had two pick sixes in back to back weeks mm-hmm. and he's been playing really good ball. The thing is, too, he also lets some plays like get out, you know, out of his control in which like OBJ scored a big touchdown against him. Um, and every now and then, you know, he does get burned. So I think it's just a matter of limiting the big play. Um, for that defense because otherwise they've been really solid this year without Jair Alexander. Kevin King hasn't played. So you had Eric Stokes, the rookie corner. He's been playing pretty darn well. Um, and Rasul Douglas kind of holding it down. And, you know, the secondary in terms of like Savage and Amos as our, our safeties, they've all been playing really, really well. The, the biggest difference from this year to last is the addition of Devondre Campbell, who we are paying him $2 million and he has been incredible. He has been one of the best inside linebackers in all of football, constantly ranking really high, is a leading tackler. Like, he has over 100 tackles this season. Like, he has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the Packers' defense, like, this year is actually a strength in which they've been put in some bad positions. And, yeah, you know, there's games where they do allow a lot of points to be scored, um, Mm -hmm. but they, they really have stepped it up from where they've been these past couple of years without some of our leading guys, without our leading pass rusher in Z and our leading, uh, you know, all pro corner in Jair Alexander. So Mm -hmm. I I think, you know, guys that I'm looking at is like Hollywood Brown, right? Like, so you're looking at him who, you know, I know he has the cases of the dropsies every now and then, but like, he also can have a big play at any point. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's going to kind of be what my main concern is going to be. And on top of that, it's scrambling quarterbacks. That has been kind of like an issue for the Packers for quite some time. Justin Fields was able to rip apart a few. Taylor Heinke a few weeks ago, like a few months ago at this point, he was able to get some rushing yards as well. So, you know, Lamar or Huntley, whoever's back there, you know, they they could potentially have a day on the ground. Oh, yeah. And that's um that's right up Huntley's alley, too, because he has no problem taking off. And another thing about Tyler Huntley, he also uh, has – he'll take the short passing game, but he'll also yeah. uh, take those shots downfield as well. He, he mixes it up pretty good. All right, and, and then flipping back to Packers offense, if you had to pick what, what the biggest problem for Packers offense is this year, what would you say it, it might be? I mean, it's the slow starts. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. I mentioned it, but, yeah, we have seven games where um, we have not scored any points in the first quarter. It's, so mm-hmm. it's slow starts. And then I would just say, while it hasn't been an overwhelming problem, it's the inconsistency at offensive line. I mean, we have lost our starting center, our starting left tackle, our backup left tackle. Now we just lost our starting right tackle. You know, like we're, we're putting guys out there who, you know, went undrafted or, you know, didn't think that they were going to be big in the NFL. And like we're putting together, you know, a mosh posh of uh, an offensive line. So Sound like the Ravens. I, 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 yeah, it's just like, but we've been playing well still, you know, and, and Aaron Rodgers is the kind of quarterback who can just adapt to it. Um, mm-hmm. But like you saw in the Bears game early on, like the Bears were able to get after him. Robert Quinn able to get a couple of sacks and, you know, doing the belt, which didn't end well for him either of the weeks that he did it. But um, I would say for it'd be offensive line, but it has to be starting out slow because, you know, when we start getting into the playoffs, we're not going to be able to do that um, mm-hmm. and come away victorious. So I think that the Ravens pass rush, you know, they, they could have opportunities here. The one thing I will say, just don't mock the belt because oh, it boy, just yes. doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it hasn't ended well for anybody. Um, Jakeem Grant. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> In that game, <laughs> he was crazy, uh, yep. especially on that punt return where he yep. started, like, what, at, like, the two-yard, like, the two- or three-yard line yep. like, way back. <laughs> And he found a crease. Has Packers special teams unit been a struggle all season? Or was that game just sort of not necessarily a fluke, but was that sort of a Oh no, off? they're bad. No, oh. they're they're bad. Like they're bad, bad. Um let me just go through the Bears game. Just 
Bear with me. <laughs> so Grant runs it back for a touchdown, right? Which, by the way, the only return punt for a touchdown this season in the entirety oh, yeah, of the NFL. they did say that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it was a great stat for us to have. One, <laughs> Mason Crosby, who has been in, he was great on Sunday night, but has been inconsistent, you know, mm-hmm. and, and has had his struggles, but also kicked the ball out of bounds, uh, and the Bears started at the 40. Mm-hmm. On top of that, you had an onside kick in which the Bears recovered that one. So they were able to get that at the end of the game. On top of that, <laughs> Amari Rogers, our rookie uh, wide receiver, who I mentioned before, he has been returning punts, uh, muffed it once again. So mm-hmm. he has done that several times. The Bears recovered that one as well. And that put us in a hole pretty early on. And thankfully, we were able to come back. But the special teams is, is horrid right now. The coverage is not great. Uh, the return game is not great. And every single time that a punt goes back there, every single Packers fan cringes. And they're just like holding their breath of just saying, hey, just don't touch the ball. Just run away from it. I don't care. <laughs> because just like don't allow like because at this point, that's what it is. It's like it is a terrifying idea. And the problem is, too, is this is not something new. I mean, we had Tyler Irvin back there um, last year. And like this is not a joke. When he got like six yards on a return once, Packers fans went wild because before that we were negative like the entire year on returns. Like wow. we do not have a good special teams. Like it, it is struggling. I will Ooh. say. Our punter, Corey Bajorquez, has been phenomenal for us. That's been really good. Uh, and Crosby, like I said, has been good the past couple games. But, yeah, the special teams is a struggle. So if you have any returners, put them all back there because they could potentially break one loose. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm concerned about anyone returning the football for us. All right. So hopefully the special teams unit and Devin Duvernay, they take some notes and they can make some stuff happen. So, oh, Tom, Duvernay. final thoughts heading into this game this weekend. I'm like concerned about this game still, as I, we were talked about before, like this is one of those games that I circled because I thought this would just be a really fun game between two really fun teams um, who could put up a lot of points. Lamar Jackson, obviously being as electric as he is. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of injuries that Lamar Jackson might not play on Sunday, Mm -hmm. um, but you still have a mobile QB Huntley proved that he could play last week. um, And he's Mm -hmm. proved it also, you know, before just last week's game. And I think that the Packers are still like in for a a pretty tough game. You know, the, the Ravens still have kind of like that hard nose, like smack you in the mouth type of mentality. And I think that even with all those injuries, you know, this is not a team to be taken lightly. And I think that this could be a close game. Um, I'm hoping that the Packers with their offensive line and, you know, you guys have a really good run defense. We're able to still, you know, move the ball, put up yards. And I, I'd like to think that the Packers are still going to come away with a win, but I, I think it's going to be anything but easy. All right. So it should be a nice, fun, stressful game uh, oh, for the yeah. both of us. <laughs> so may the best, uh, really healthiest team end up Flip getting the, the win on Sunday. <laughs> absolutely yeah it's uh both our teams uh have have felt the wrath of the injury gods uh this Mm -hmm. year so you know hopefully uh you know both our teams make the playoffs and you know we could get a little bit more healthy you guys get lamar back and uh we could at least see some competition that goes on you never know all right man appreciate you hopping on man absolutely thanks for having me man oh yeah for sure